Let's go live. Started. Hello! 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 And welcome to What's Veg Got to Do with Fussy Eating? First of all, I want to say a really big thank you to Simon and the Peas Please crowd for inviting us here today. If you um, aren't sure who Peas Please are, Simon was really hoping to be here today to give you a little bit of an introduction. Unfortunately, he's part of another summit group today and that's running a little bit late. So let me just explain who Peas Please are for you. Uh, in this country, as I'm sure you're aware, we are recommended to have five portions of fruit or veg a day. That campaign has failed miserably. And research shows that about a third of all young children are getting one portion or less of veg a day. A day. A day, that's right. And um, with uh, a lot of health issues in the UK relating back to the way we eat, it's really important to get our veg uptake increased a lot. 16% of all all children are getting their portions of fruit and veg from ultra processed foods such as pizza and baked beans. Baked beans, my day! If you don't know what uh, ultra processed foods are, these are foods that basically are unrecognizable mm -hmm. as their original yeah. ingredients. Okay, so saying that, we are working with Peas Please. Peas Please look at the whole food system to try and encourage people to eat more fruit and veg. They look at the way it's farmed, they look at how it gets to the supermarket and how that is brought to you and how we can encourage people to eat more. And that's why we're so proud to be part of this summit today. But what does veg have to do with fussy eating? Well, if you're here today, you probably know it already. I'm presuming you're all mummies and daddies. How many of you actually today watching are parents and have young children? I am looking at my camera here. It's got a bit of a delay, so I apologize if I don't react instantly. But if you have young children, hit the like button or just let me know if you've got children and let me know as well if you're going to be cooking with them today because that is what we're here to do. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Marvin and I run a business called Fussy where I predominantly work with parents of children who are very, very picky eaters or sensory eaters. These children have a really, really small food range that they eat and we just try and encourage them to eat more varied diets. Not necessarily just veg, but the one thing all my parents that I work with will say is that their children don't eat a lot of vegetables. I do. You do, that's right. Before I get into this too much, I just want to show you a quick video to let you know who I am and how I became so incredibly passionate about what I do today. Okay, run that video. When I realised I was pregnant, I was completely unprepared. I'd worked most of my adult life in and around the catering business, either managing restaurants or working as a chef. And as I reached the end of my 20s, I'd taken a sabbatical uh, and realised that I wanted to do more than just serve Don't food. eat that tissue. Cooking had always been a really therapeutic activity for me. And in times when my own mental health had been suffering, lovingly preparing a home-cooked meal was often enough to see me through the darkness. So I decided I wanted to help as many people as possible through food. And I started my degree in nutrition. It was around the time when I was finishing my degree that I discovered I was pregnant. And before I'd even found a job in my new field, I had to make some pretty big life decisions. And all I knew was that I wanted to be the very best mum that I could be for the little life boy inside of me. I started to make sure that I was eating a healthy, well-balanced and varied diet. Right from the very start, I wanted to give this little girl all the nutrition that she needed to build a solid foundation for good health. In March 2018, my daughter Amber was born. She was a healthy, bouncing, beautiful little girl and everything was going well. Then came the weaning stage and that's when my trouble started. I 
I tried cooking recipes I found online. They mostly ended up on the floor. I tried the usual tricks, bribes and games. She just dug her heels in deeper. I became completely obsessed with reading every research paper, kids nutrition book, blog article and piece of advice I could find on any and all of the mummy groups out there. I really had no idea which ones were good advice and which ones were utter nonsense. I felt like an utter failure and I found myself asking what was I doing wrong? How could a trained nutritionist fail so miserably? With my confidence shaken, I knew I needed a different approach, something that leveraged all my training and experience. Which is when it struck me, I'd been through all of this before. While I was studying, I'd been working as support staff for a group of adults with ASD. You see, many of them had extreme picky eating habits due to anxieties around food, sensory issues, rigid eating routines, and the fear of the unknown. This caused them to regularly refuse food. And although their reasons for doing so were extremely complex and diverse, I had helped them overcome their anxieties and expand their eating ranges. That's when I realised that I could do this. All I needed to do was help Amber gain her trust and confidence around these new foods and make mealtime fun, just like I had done for my service users. And even though I was constantly stressed, frustrated and completely exhausted, I knew I had to give Amber 1000%. I had three simple goals. One, use games and activities to build trust and confidence and familiarity around new foods. Two, create tasty, healthy meals that were quick and easy to make and could be batch cooked and frozen for the days when cooking from scratch wasn't an option. And three, devise strategies to deal with the inevitable mealtime tantrums. The result? stress-free mealtimes and a thriving daughter who loves to eat healthy food. Now obviously this didn't happen overnight. It took several months of trial and error and a lot of frustration to get to this point. But now I've refined the process and with the help of so many amazing mums that I've had the pleasure to work with, I've developed the FED method. It stands for Familiarise, Educate and Develop. And it's all about giving you the tools, strategies and confidence to get your little humans eating a varied, balanced diet so, so they can thrive too. So, that's me. Before I go any further, I better introduce the star of this show. This is my daughter, Amber. Hey! And she is my reason why I do what I do and why I am here today. I believe personally that all health starts with good nutrition, not just physical health, but mental health and social health. And that's why I'm so passionate to make sure that she gets the best start possible for future health. Okay, let me tell you what we're gonna to do today. I am going to cook these foods here. Basically, research shows that children are more involved in the kitchen and more involved in the preparation of food are more likely to eat those foods later. Also, children that know how to cook are more likely to grow up to be healthy adults, and that's why we do this. The foods that we prepare are fussy, friendly meals, okay? And it means while your children is preparing the meals, they're going to become more familiar with things like this, so the next time you is serve them up, is that a cucumber? No. What is it? A courgette. Good job. So the next time you serve them up as part of a meal, they're more likely to eat those foods because they recognise it. They've built up that familiar familiarity and the trust, and they might think, "Well, it didn't taste that bad when we made those fritters. Maybe it's okay as part of a meal." So that's why we cook like this. If you like this idea and you want to learn more about the recipes we cook, click the link above. We have got a five day bake them healthy challenge on the go. So you're going to learn a little bit more about the fed method and what we're doing. And you're going to find out a few more recipes that your child is going to love. Okay, so shall we get started? Can you lean on yourself? Thank you. 
Okay, so the first thing we are going to do, let me just explain a little bit more actually. I'm going to try and talk to you a little bit about the FED method. You're going to have to bear with me a little bit because normally when I talk about the FED method, I'm solely talking about the FED method. Today I'm trying to entertain an Amber and Cook. So I will do my very best to get across to you my message and why the FED method works so well for so many parents. But we'll see how that goes. Okay, let's just get started. So the first thing we're going to do is... Get started. Have you guys all got your recipes? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. We are going to get some oats and we're going to do a cup of oats. And we're going to put them in the food processor. A big one? Yeah, big cup of oats. What I would love to see... Can you put that in there? If you guys are cooking along with me, which I hope you are doing, please, please, if you feel comfortable, take some photos and post them on the comments so we can see how you're getting on. We would love to see that. We've got a few comments come up. Gran Gran obviously is watching. Hello, Gran Gran. Say hello. Hello, Gran Gran. Uh, we've got Sharon who says, my seven-year-old daughter is fussy. I'm yes, really you are. The sad fact is, we get told a lot that fussy eating is a phase. Yeah. And for most children, that is true. Can you stand up and reach that? Um, but unfortunately, for one quarter of all children, fussy eating isn't a phase and they're not going to grow out of it and they will grow up to be fussy adults. I'm sure you all know them. Chris Ray, if you're watching, it's you. I know you're there. That doesn't necessarily mean that they can't grow out of it with a little bit of help. You just have to have the right strategies in place to help them grow out of their fussy eating. So we can do it. Is there any more comments? Um, okay, while I'm reading the comments, do you want to press the start button? Yeah. Yes. It's a little bit noisy, sorry. So, you just want this to look like flour. You can use flour, you can use breadcrumbs. You can also use things like um, ground up seeds and nuts if you want to make it a little bit more sort of healthy fats in there. Or you can add something like Black seed as well, if you want a little bit more fibre. Black seed, obviously, is made for omega 3 as well, so you can sneak those sorts of things in there. Okay, that is beautiful. So we've got our breadcrumb like oats here. The next thing we're going to add. Not yet. We've got to add our chickpeas in, don't we? You're just going to eat them, aren't you? Oh, you're going to add them one by one. This might take a while. Should we pour them in? I think you should stand up a little bit higher, you'll be able to reach better. Mm -mm. Can you? Oh, that's a little bit far away. The plug wouldn't stretch quite far enough today. Okay, good job. Let's do this. We'll just squeeze this and then I'll explain a little bit more about what we're doing. Perfect. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay, switch off then. Okay, so the fed method. We talked about it there. Right, watch your fingers on that blade. Um, Familiarise is a big part of the fed method. And I want to explain a little bit about that because that for me is where a lot of people see their big wins when it comes to their fussy eating because it's uh, quite often it's things that we don't realize okay so we talked a little bit about getting your child familiar with these foods through cooking research shows the more a child is familiar with new foods the more likely they are to eat those foods the number that was is about is 15 to 16 interactions are you just eating this um 15 to 16 interactions with food to, for your child to start gaining trust and preferences for that food. 
that doesn't have to be 16 times of you going, eat a courgette, eat a courgette. Amber will. I'm not going to tempt her because she will eat this today. Yummy! <laughs> and Yummy. the next thing I'm going to do, if I can Yummy. find my grater, Yummy. is just grate the carrots and the courgettes. Yummy. I'm doing it in the food processor because it's Yummy. quicker. You are obviously able to do this by Yummy. hand. Um, so, a great way for a child to interact with food, if your child isn't even prepared to come into the same room as a vegetable, you can do it through things like reading books. Um, research shows, do you want to do this, don't you? Okay, let's, let me cut the ends off, and then you can cut it. Do you remember how we cut it, Amber? Yeah. Okay, I'll do it that way. So, long ways. Um, research shows that children that read books. I well, I'm helping you. Research shows that children that read books about veg or have veg in them are more likely to eat those veg later because they've built the familiarity. Long ways again? No, long ways. I can do it. Long well, way. that's the way you need to do it because it's going to go in the grater. I'm going to help you. We had a great success with this one ourselves. Uh, we quite often read Meg, Mog and Owl. I don't know if you guys know those books. They're brilliant. I used to read them when I was a kid. Amber loves them. Uh, long story short, one of them is about Meg's egg. She accidentally magics up some dinosaur eggs. Um, and one of the dinosaurs that pops out loves Meg's. What does he love? Her cabbages, doesn't he? Yeah, and goes into Meg's gardens and eats up all her cabbages. Again, what I want. Well, then one day I bought cabbages and I hadn't really thought about it. Um, I thought Amber's never going to eat these cabbages, not in a hundred years. I will, I will. She did, loves them ate all of them and then it was only then that I made the connection it's because of Meg and her stegosaurus eating uh, our cabbage eating stegosaurus that she loves cabbages so you can do things like that um, also I hope you guys can hear me have you guys seen the veg power campaign that's going on just now? Um, okay, put that one's in. I'm just going to wait till this is finished. It's got that for a second. Um, the Eat Them to Defeat Them campaign. Brilliant idea. For the first time, the veg People are using the fast food's own marketing strategies to get kids involved in eating food. You've seen the adverts. Hopefully you've got the activity book in your house. I was going to bring a copy of it down here and I forgot. We need to cut the ends off that one. I'm just going to cut the end off this one because they're a bit hard. Can you move it off the channel? Right, these are a great way to get kids interacting, colouring in, doing puzzles, thinking about these foods without actually having to touch them. However, if your child is more prepared to touch food, vegetables, you can do all sorts of things. You obviously know about the good old uh, potato stamps. You can use as whatever vegetables you want. Sweet potatoes sweet potatoes, um, peppers, you could use onions, tomatoes, whatever you want. Okay, let's do this quick, quick. To make those pictures. Another great one, I don't know if you saw last year, my hero, uh, Hugh Fernley Wood and John, last year did a programme about natural health. And one of his programmes was about fussy eating and he had great success using models for children, models out of vegetables for children to interact with. We use this one all the time, it is a great way to get children interacting with vegetables and depending on the vegetables, sometimes it can be a little bit too tempting for your little person to try those veg when they think you're not looking. Anyway, there are hundreds and hundreds of ways to get your child interacting with veg. 
use their own likes and hobbies get them interested in books. only thing that uh, is limiting you is your own creativity so get interacting and you put this out yes but hang on let me speak a little bit more the next thing we have to do is put this in a dry clean tea towel and rinse off some of the liquid because this is quite moist and you want it to be as dry as possible when it goes into your uh, fritters because otherwise they're just going to fall apart. Okay, so let me do this. Okay, familiarise, is it just about your child becoming familiar with new foods? It's about you becoming familiar with some of the reasons why children don't like to eat. And I'm afraid I do not have time today to go into all of those reasons because I don't have time but again if you want to find out more click on the link and join the five day bake them healthy challenge and you will find out a little bit more about the reasons why children don't like to eat food new foods i'm going to go over some of them today with you anyway hopefully if amber lets me are you ready to rinse this out okay so if you were watching see how much liquid comes out of this oh. It's quite a lot, isn't it? If you were being really thrifty, you could squeeze this out and make the liquid into a smoothie or something like that, and that would be really tasty. We're not doing that today, are we? Um, so, reasons why children don't like to eat. There's lots of them. So, I'm going to give you my top ones um, that a lot of children will go through, especially um, young toddlers, okay. And the first one I'm going to say, hang on, is something called food neophobia. Can you put that in there for me, please? Yeah. Let me unravel it. Okay, food neophobia is a technical term. Um, it basically means a fear of new foods, and it's something that most toddlers will go through as they. Right, let go. Um, as they get a little bit of independence and they move from having to rely solely on mum to toddling about and they really they think the reason for this i'm not sure that's the right time for sure remember Hang on. sorry guys there you go um the reason they think this happened is evolutionary wise we haven't caught up with ourselves. Basically, uh, our bodies don't realize that we live in nice safe houses now. We keep our food in fridges. It's all nicely packaged. But back in the day when kids were more likely to be wandering about by themselves, it was actually really beneficial for them to be a little bit scared of new foods because it's what would have stopped them from going out and just eating poison berries or poisonous mushrooms or whatever they found lying about. So it was actually really, really useful in back in the days to have this fear of new foods. That means it is in your genes. If you and daddy are both fussy eaters, you are more likely to have a child that's a fussy eater. But again, with the right tricks and strategies, it's not necessarily the case that they will grow up to be a fussy eater. Another reason why children don't like to eat a lot of the time is because it's about power. Children don't have a lot of autonomy in their life. We tell them when it's acceptable to wake us up. We tell them what they're doing with their days, what they're eating, when they're going to bed, who they're going to see. And one thing that children have power over is what they do and don't eat, okay? So give your child as much autonomy as possible. It doesn't have to be around food. It could be about what they wear. It could be about what activities you do at the weekend. It gives them choices. When it comes to food, get them obviously involved as much as possible. Give them the choices about what meals you're going to be preparing. Don't ask them outright what you want for dinner because they will go back to their old favourites. It gives them choices of things that you think are acceptable. Do you want chicken and pizza sauce or do you want meatballs? Chicken and pizza, obviously. <laughs> um, but things like that, they are more likely, it's not always the case. I could give Amber a pizza, uh, chicken and pizza sauce, and she could quite like completely blank it. It I does happen. Would you eat it? Do you promise? Um, 
Yep, yeah. Right, let's, do you want to do that next for me, baby? Yeah. Um, it's not always the case, but they are more likely to eat the foods that they've chosen over the foods that, that you choose for them. Um, obviously, get them involved in the cooking. When you go shopping, get them involved. Let them choose the foods that you're buying. Do you want small uh, small tomatoes or big tomatoes? Oh. Whoops! Good effort. <laughs> um, do you want small tomatoes, big tomatoes? Do you want red peppers or green peppers? Do you want one about yellow peppers? Or yellow peppers? Yeah, you could have. Give them the choices. Amber does most of my shopping for me these days. I'm not going to lie. I tell her what I need, and she goes out and picks everything. Give but them. The... I want to pick everything. That's because you're very good at it. Give them all the choices you can that you feel comfortable with. Um, when it comes to meal time, I'm just going to add garlic powder. Okay, this is half a spoon of garlic powder. I want garlic powder. I learned quite early on. Do you actually use the measuring spoon instead of just giving Amber control of how much garlic powder she puts in? There you go. Okay. And salt. I don't mind putting a bit of salt in Amber's food because we don't eat processed food. So. Okay, let me put some in your hand. You might not feel comfortable having salt in your food. That's up to you. But because we don't eat processed food, she's not getting that intake from there. Um, so stress at the mealtime table. Stress is going to be your big, big roadblock if you've got a fussy eater. If they're stressed already for whatever reason, they want, they don't like eating. They're going to be stressed. If you're stressed going into mealtime, and if you've got a fussy eater, you might find mealtimes really stressful, and that's fair. There might be a million and one other reasons why you're stressed. Um, yeah, okay, you start. I'm going to get the basil. So I think the recipe was two teaspoons. We're going to add a little bit more because we like basil. Can um, I have... Yeah. Are you going to cut it for me? Okay. Chop it up. There's a million reasons why you might be stressed. Children read your emotions. They're constantly looking at you to see how you react to things. So if you're stressed going into a mealtime, they're going to be stressed. What happens then is their body... Chop it up. You want to make it as small as you can. Their bodies are going to fill with, you can just rip it if you want, stress hormones. These are your fight or flight hormones, okay? These are the same ones that your body used to use to tell you to hot foot it from the saber tooth tiger. Again, evolution hasn't caught up with us. If your child has those fight or flight hormones circulating, any messages going to and from their tummy is just going to stop, okay? Because the last thing your child needs to be thinking about if they're running from a saber-toothed tiger is where they're going to get a pizza from. So their body is going to instantly be not telling it if it's hungry or not, he or she is hungry or not, and it's literally going to be screaming at your child to get out of that situation as soon as possible. You would feed the tiger. So yeah. it's really important to go into meal times positive and happy. Um, I just saw a flash of comments there. No? Okay. So that is all I want to say about familiarize for the moment, well, guys. Sure. I could drive it on about it all day, but let me show you a video from one of the amazing mums that I've had the opportunity to work with over the last few weeks. Go that video. Hi Morvan, I hope you are. My daughter is very, very selective on what she eats and refuses lots of healthy options even when they're available and even when the whole family is eating it. So after attending the sessions with Morvan, uh, with the fed method uh, she we with after family the familiarized um, session uh, Morvan said that kids need to be exposed at least for s at least 16 times to a food before um, they actually have a go at it ha have a go and having it most of the time as a parent you would think uh, exposing them is giving them um, 
the food again and again but Morvan has explained not really it's just to have a visual of it to have a feel of it just look at it touch it smell it uh, might introduce him to the food and that played wonders in my house uh, we've introduced some cashew nuts it worked I have pictures uh, of the food I want her to try around in the play, play um, room uh, we have it on the table without really offering to her it's just there and after a few times didn't count if it's 16 she actually just picked up the food and tried it which is amazing um and one of the sessions i've let her just clean the carrots while i was um, chopping them and she helped chopping and once in her plate she ate the whole lot amazing thank you morvan bye <laughs> Okay, that was Tima. She has had amazing success with her daughter. We're so proud of her. Okay, how are you guys getting on? Are you at this stage? Mm, comments? Oh, I don't have any comments. Okay. Um, yes, I'll roll them up. I might just take my... Well done, Oh, thank you. Okay, cool. Hey guys, if you have any photos, stick them up there. We'd love to see them. Put them away. Yes. Yes. Okay, so the next step is just to roll these up. I'm going to roll them up and you're going to squash them out while we're a bit of a team. We've done this before. So the next part of Fed Method is familiarize, is educate, sorry. So educate is all about giving you the knowledge that you need to make empowered, informed choices about your child's health. I'm not going to go so much into child nutrition today because that is not why you're here. But what we talk about through educate is a little bit about the nutrients your child needs for cognitive development, so brain development, for good immunity, for bone health, and for good gut health, as well as the basic macronutrients that they need. Because for me, as a mum, it's the most important thing I can do for her future is setting her up with good immunity or good health. There we go. I think you'd be better doing it on there and then putting them on there. No, that's not what you want to do. You might need a bigger Well, why don't oh, you do what you want and then I'll figure it out. Um, but it's not just about child nutrition, it's about how to get those nutrients into your diet in a varied and accomplished way. But it's also about how to give you the tips and strategies that you need to, to, to fit those into your schedule. Because I am very aware that I am extremely lucky. I work from home. I love cooking and I get to work with my daughter all the time. Yay! <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Yay! Not everyone is in that situation. Yay! Not everyone Yay! enjoys cooking and I get that. So a big part of Educate is about making it as easy as possible for you so you're more likely to stick to your healthy habits that you've grown. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'm going to just play you another little video from one of the mums that I work with. This is Abby and she's talking about her son, Oliver. Hi, I'm Abby and I'm mum to Oliver who is two and a half. I found the Fed method to be incredibly helpful and useful in in tackling fussy eating with my, my little monster. Um, the Fed Method has really empowered me with um, a lot of knowledge and useful hints and tips into how to get Oliver involved with with food without without the pressure of making him eat it. Um, Morvin has been incredibly supportive um, and she's she's so knowledgeable. She's you know she's full of useful tips and ideas on how to how to help the situation how to make it low stress and celebrating those little wins as well you know maybe he didn't eat the food this time but he played with it and he thought about eating it and that's progress and it's about celebrating those little progresses and continuing with the method the educate module i found in 
Okay, that was Abby. Abby is another incredible mum that I've got to work with, and she's done so well with her little boy. So well done, Abby. Okay, we are getting on with these fritters. We've just about got to the bottom of them. The next part of it of fed is develop, right? So you have got through to your child for the most part and you have them eating some things but there is going to be tantrums there is going to be mealtime drama bed isn't a quick fix guys i'm sorry there is no quick fix for getting your children to accept new foods it is a process and it's all about working the fed method and keep on going and keep going back to familiarize um so you will need to develop strategies that work for you and your family because, of course, no two families are the same. I can't hear you. Um, and you're going to have what works for Amber isn't necessarily going to work for you. So the D in, in bed is about developing strategies that work for you. But on top of that, it's about uh, creating systems that are in place and about being able to preempt the roadblocks that are coming. Because a lot of the time, we can preempt, do you like to wipe your hand? We can preempt things, and we kind of put a rod in our own back for the way that we feed our children as well. But on top of all that, Fed is about developing your networks, because you could be putting in all this incredible work, but if your partner or your, immediate family aren't involved, you're going to have limited success because the immediate family is their big influence. The children obviously have a lot of influences growing up. In the younger days, Mama, it is you. As your child grows up, it's going to be your immediate family and then your larger family and then there is other, are you going? She's done now. What are you doing? Can you just hang out for a bit? Why don't you no, finish your snack? Amber's already on the pre made ones. Um, I'm just going to start cooking. Um, so, it's about developing strategies that are going to work for your family and figuring out the influences that your child has. A big influence at the minute that a lot of children have is social media. It's a really hard topic to, to overcome, unfortunately. Um, but research shows that children now know about unhealthy processed foods about a year earlier than they know about healthy foods. And it also has shown that children are using junk food and processed foods as a way to interact with their peers and, and, and just get involved with other children. Children that eat healthily are generally thought of as being boring or, or not you know, cool to interact with. So we need to get that message out to our children and get them understanding that that's not how it is at all. Okay? So that is your big influencers right there. So the more you can get your networks involved and make healthy eating the social norm the better it is amber i need to use the cooker now so you need to not be hanging on me okay so i'm going to cook these about one to two minutes each side until they're golden brown i'm just going to put a little bit of oil in the pan and just flip them over um hi so it's about your immediate family it's about your network, your larger family, if you have to rely on Auntie Sheila to look after your little person once a week or twice a week, that's fine. But if Auntie Sheila is going to undermine the good efforts you're putting in, you might want to speak to her. It might help if you provide some of the healthy foods that you're cooking so she's not just feeding your child chicken nuggets every time that your, your child's there. If you have a granny that feels it's their prerogative to feed your child rubbish constantly, which all grandparents do, you might want to get in front of them and just have a word with them. 
Well, you actually say it, it's up to you. If you only see granny once in a blue moon, it might be perfectly acceptable for you to let them have those snacks. But if you see granny more often, we have a great granny and she would be feeding our daughter custard and Swiss rolls constantly if she had the opportunity. We've stepped in front of that because that's not what we want for our daughter. The battles you have with your grandparents, I'm not going to get involved with. They're your battles. It is your prerogative, your child, your rules, okay? At the end of the day, most grandparents want to see their grandchildren thrive. So if you explain it nicely, don't be defensive. They are going to hopefully listen. So let me just flip these over. Two seconds. It's more than that as well. It's about getting involved with your schools. If your child is at nursery or school, how much information is there for your child to eat healthily? Does your schools do grow vegetables? Research shows that schools that grow vegetables are more likely to have children that eat more vegetables. So can you encourage that? Or sort of? is there a system in place so your school can grow vegetables? If not, can you grow vegetables at home? Even if you've just got a little window box, can you start growing vegetables? Um, but also, is there a community food hub? Is there community gardens? Is there kids' cooking classes? Get them involved in as many food activities as possible so they start seeing eating healthy as the social norm rather than a weird thing that only the geeks do. Now, on top of that, you're going to need support as well. So I want you to start uh, virtually growing your networks, whether that is uh, through groups like FUSSEAT and joining the Fed method, or any of the other hundreds of mummy groups out there. Um, what I've learned from mummy groups is that they are amazingly supportful, amazingly knowledgeable, and just really, really supportive. So get out there and join as many communities as you can so your child is seeing this cooking activity as the social norm. Let me just let these one more time. Um, Sorry guys. And that, in a nutshell, is the Fed method. Do you have any, let me just check the comments quickly. Who oh, think you, oh, late the party, good morning. Hi Justin. Thank you, great to, oh, thank you Olga. Brilliant. Grand Grand is your biggest fan as always. If you've got any questions, now is the time to do it, everybody. Hmm? Oh, daddy's too please single dad. Yes, absolutely. I generally talk to mummies, guys, and I'm really sorry about that because on the whole, it is mummies that have these concerns. And I'm sorry, daddies, if you're watching. It's generally mummies that I talk to that is my audience, but you guys too need to get involved because you are just as big as influence on your children as mummies. I used to work with one one boy who was a teenager. Uh, he was on the spectrum and I was really, really working hard with him to encourage him to eat more food. His mum was really worried about him. He had a really limited range of eating habits that he had. And about three weeks to a month down the line, I um, found out that daddy also didn't eat vegetables, didn't see the point of eating vegetables, and didn't see why his son should eat vegetables. It was at that point when I realized that if daddy wasn't on board, we were gonna make no headway. So daddy, it is really important you get on board. And if you are doing so already, good luck. Okay, so. Any more questions? No. I am about for a few more minutes, guys. If you do want to ask questions, please stick them in the comments. Uh, if you want to find more about the Fed method and the five day Bake Them Healthy Challenge, click on the link above, above, in the description, wherever it is. You're gonna learn a lot of new recipes 
and you are going to learn about the Fed method in a little bit more detail. Okay, that's me today. Hi, Mama. <laughs> Hi, you. Here are our finished products. These are the ones that we pre made. You can serve these up however you like. Um, with whatever sauce it's going to make your child eat them. I think we're going to have ours with a mint and yogurt dip, but however your child's going to eat them is absolutely fine. Oh, Amber's that. already started on these ones. So thank you very much for joining us today. And hopefully we will see you soon on the challenge. Okay, bye, bye for now. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>